My name is David Allison, and I have the privilege of serving as the director of the NORC, which is UAB's NIH-funded Nutrition and Obesity Research Center. If I had to share a secret with you, I would say that my secret is that I'd come to work every day even if they made me pay them to come to work. I have the best job in the world, and I get to do such exciting stuff. And what I get to do is I hang out with a lot of really bright people who share their ideas with me and are occasionally willing to listen to some of my ideas. We've got some neat stuff going on here. We have a rich panoply of people involved, and there's a true spirit of collaboration. Institutional boundaries are not institutional barriers. People facilely move across departments and schools and all elements of the university to work together. And we have people working from all different backgrounds and walks of life here, and they're having fun doing it. I'm Stephen Watts. I'm a professor of biology here at UAB. Our research area is that of comparative biology. We're very interested in the nutrition of a number of different animal models that are used in the biological sciences. Some of the various animal models that we will look at will include the zebrafish, very popular model now used at the National Institute of Health. We also use sea urchins, again another popular embryological model that's used in a variety of embryological studies, everything from basic development to toxicology. Within the last year, we have brought a new animal model into the ARC, and that is the killifish Nothobranchius frizzeri. This is a very unique fish coming out of southern Africa. It only lives for about three months in the wild which means now we can study all aspects of development in a much shorter timetable than you can with other animal models. What we've seen is that certain types of diets are extending the lifespan of this fish. And since the fish are very similar genetically to what we see in the humans, we can draw many different conclusions from studying these animals that gives us insight and what we may want to be looking at in human populations as well. I'm Dr. Olivia Afuso, and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Epidemiology. I have a body composition study that's going on on the fourth floor. It's called the Photo Body Project. So the whole idea is we want to do away with BMI. Um, BMI is an easy measurement that uses height and weight um, to give you some estimate of body fatness. and as you know, it doesn't always work very well because some people are large people, but they're very muscular. So the BMI would say that this person is overweight or obese, when in actuality they're not. They just happen to be a large person. And so we have people come in and um, for males, we have them wear biking shorts only and we take a front photo, a side photo, and a back photo. And then we can use that information to create a 3D model of body volume. So the idea, like, you know, if we could really get exactly what we wanted, we could take just any kind of digital camera, either one from a cell phone, and take the photograph, and then we can take the three photographs and integrate it into a piece of software, and it spits out the person's percent body fat, so it would be a lot more accurate than the BMI. My name is Stephen Osted, and I'm a professor and the chair of the biology department at UAB. So the type of research I do tries to answer the question, why do we age at the rate that they do? And can we find ways to preserve health so it would be healthy instead of 60 or 70 years, maybe 90 or 100 years? So for instance, I study a group of clams that lives over 500 years. And they have a beating heart, so there's a heart out there that's been beating for over 500 years. Um, I study other animals that look like uh, small corals, and they, as far as we can tell, are immortal. We're trying to figure out how they prevent aging. The most personally rewarding study that I've done so far is the study of a drug that we've now discovered that slows aging in mice. It slows it robustly. It doesn't just make them live longer, but it cures mouse versions of Alzheimer's disease, cures mouse cancers, it slows um, cardiovascular disease, it improves sleep, it slows the normal age uh, uh, rate of memory loss. Um, and the interesting thing is it does this in mice that only started the drug when they were the mouse equivalent of 60 years of age. I would have never ever believed that this is possible, but yet it's really turned out to be, for mice anyway, 
a miracle, a miracle drug. My name is Tim Nagy. I'm a professor of nutrition sciences, and I do research related to obesity, um, weight loss, nutrition, aging, cancer, and diabetes. A lot of the research that I do is fundamental to other researchers. So for instance, the work that I do in developing methods for phenotyping or measuring parameters in small animals non-invasively um, has been used worldwide. And so DEXA is one of those. Another is quantitative magnetic resonance, which allows us to actually measure fat, lean, and body water in anything from fruit flies, um, zebrafish, mice, rats, humans, um, without anest using anesthesia at all. Um, so this has been really revolutionary in the field because I can take 10 live fruit flies and put them in a small vial and I can measure the amount of water, fat, and lean mass in those 10 fruit flies. The fruit flies can be walking around in that vial, moving around, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the precision or the accuracy of the measurement, but it allows us to really do exquisite longitudinal work in the field of obesity and nutrition. One of the things I think I really like about working in the NORC is that there isn't uh, really a typical day for me. Uh, so I come in and some days I start by, by reading papers, working on my computer. Uh, other days I, I come in and work with human participants in, in our uh, exercise study. Uh, other days I'll end up in the lab helping uh, work with blood samples. And so I'm able to do a lot of different science uh, while still, you know, pushing forward with my own research. Students uh, do very well within the NARC environment. We support career development through uh, access to core facilities, availability of pilot grants, uh, speakers that can come in and bring new ideas to the table uh, and foster kind of hypothesis of uh, generation. We provide first class training and I know that I am biased about it because I'm pretty much involved with that. But I mean, it, 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 it shows. When we go to meetings, our students, I mean, uh, this past year, on the pediatric section of the Obesity Society, they identify 10 posters as you know, the top 10 posters of approximately 70 or 90 different posters. Of those 10, the only institution that had two posters was UAB. Both individuals, both were students, part of the NORC. And I think it's a, it's a wonderful thing that there is a way to collaborate between different laboratories because in our days there is no single scientist who can do everything in his or her lab. You have to collaborate and also you don't have knowledge about everything because as we learn more we understand how little we know still. The NORC takes a very comprehensive approach to this problem and it takes it in a very uh, team-spirited way which allows us to effectively bring together people from many different backgrounds. If you want a vigorous interaction of smart, committed, motivated scientists who are eager to share ideas, mix different kinds of expertise, to move forward in understanding human health and how to preserve it. Uh, I can't think of a better place than the NORC. It gives researchers here resources to allow them to flourish in nutrition and obesity. So I think the NORC has already changed the world and will continue to do so um, through the leveraging the resources and also reinforcing the interdisciplinary collaboration. That's allowed us to really make UAB's NORC one of the places for the avant-garde idea for the alternative viewpoint, for the question that nobody else has thought to ask, for the question that nobody else is willing to ask. UAB, I think, specializes in those things, and I think part of the reason we are good at that, and part of the reason we have fun with that, is because we have that culture of working together across disciplinary boundaries that brings new insights.